Well, hello there, and welcome. So, everybody knows how to sort items with these sorters. Especially, uh, like I've set it up here, or coming in, or ingots in this case. They all get sorted, or in the silos, and I got the ingots in a vending machine. <coughs> so, that's not the biggest problem, or thing. But, let's get over here. Let's say we have a generator, and we want to feed it. Well, you can go to a silo with coal. We can open it, get one coal. Oh, in this case, we have already two. Only I need one, put it back and put it in the generator. All right, you could also do something like this. Generator, hook it on a silo and let it run towards straight in the generator so it can run 24. Or if you have it logic controlled, you can do it like that. But you can also do something like doing a request system or a logic shoot system. I have made a small setup here. Silo generator again. But we also have a shoot a digital flip flop shoot. Normal if you place it, it's one to one ratio like this. But that's not fun because then you all can use a normal flip flop shoot splitter. This one is just a lot, doesn't need power, does also one to one. This one you can also do two to one, two straight, one down. Three straight, one down. But if you set it to 0 to 1, it's always straight. Unless you do it manually. Like this. I do it now manually. Let's get one call. And it went through there, out there. Which you can see, it resets immediately to straight. So the next one, or two, is going straight through. Just straight. Unless you do it manually or logical. Now I have a small code written here. What we are doing, we have a generator, we have the shoot and we have a silo. So what I'm doing, I'm loading first into the generator if my import slot, where the coal goes, is occupied. If it's occupied, it goes back. If it's not occupied, that means it's out of coal. So we're going to request a stack of coal from the silo. So what are we going to do? We're going to set the shoot into mode 1. So this one is going into mode 1. That's like that. We give the order for set the silo open one. We wait one tick and then close the silo again. And then the next part is we're going to wait till the generator is occupied again. If we don't wait, it will say OK, because it has a traveling time. Oh, do the silo open and close again. Now we wait till it's occupied again and then be going back. So what it does is when I grab that out of there, it's going to request. And you can see it's going to set to mode 1. I'm not resetting to mode 0, just one item will set it back to 0. Or will set it back to straight through. <coughs> now you, you, and you can see it went through into there and it immediately sets the system back to straight. Like that. So I'm logical setting it to 1. But if you keep this one as ratio 0 to 1, the rest will always go straight through. Why is that important? Well, if you scale that up. We have a lot of silos here. <coughs> also, I am making use of the vending machines. But we have a lot of silos. And they are connected to one long shoot system. In here, the uh, vending machine comes. And over here, I got almost the same setup. I got that shoot again. 
And we got a generator again. You can see these two are on different, completely different circuits. So I need to get a silo where the coal is in to activate when the generator, this ore slot, is empty. Now it's now empty. Input slot is now empty. So we need to do a request. Over here I have a setup. We have just an IC chip and we have a batch reader in this case. Batch reader gives the amount of um, ratio average of the batteries. But it doesn't matter now. So <clears throat> I got a little script here. Almost the same. We have a generator again and we have that shoot again. Only this time we have a batch reader. So what I'm doing is the first two parts is the same. When it's occupied, you don't need uh, to do anything. The next part is we need to, when it's empty, it needs to request a stack of coal. I'm using in this case the channels again, because that's the easy part. In this case, channel one. First thing I'm going to do is see if the channel one, that system is clear because we're going to expand it so I need to know that not another one is requesting so first I'm going to do when it's equal uh, it's not equal to zero it goes back but zero means for me it's clear so we're doing the same thing we said shoot in mode one and we doing a hash code of the or uh, call or that's the hash of that we're going to set that on a channel and for the rest, it's the same thing again. We're gonna wait till it's occupied. As long as it's not occupied, it's going to wait. And when it's back to occupied, it says, okay, I got the call and I'm going to reset the channel to zero so the next one can do it. But yeah, this doesn't mean say anything about which silo is call and has to give it. Well, we have a nothing in here. So we have only one thing that needs to be on a screw. And that is going to be a logic memory, what I'm going to use to read the channels. That's on D0. Now, honestly, it's not that hard. We're just going to say loop. Then we say load. Uh, wait we forgot the yield first load into r0 from that logic memory memory we want to read connection one and i want to read the channel one if you want more way uh, want to know more about channels there's another video on youtube on my channel that has everything about logic channels so when it's equal to zero or zero, you can just go back loop. But it, when it's not, it needs to define is this the um, do we request call? So what I'm going to do when it's not equal. So if R zero is not equal to words, then we're going to grab the hash code of call or That's that one. It's going to um, we're going to do the branch. It's going to skip a few rules. I believe it's five. But when it's equal, we're going to say, okay, I'm going to use the batch name silo name hash that is hash. In this case, I named it. Uh, silo call and we're going to set it open and then one we need to define still the silo so that's what we're going to do first divine silo silo we need that one We're going to open one 
this is almost the sec exact same what we did on the other one set silo open we're going to yield and we're going to do this again and we're going to close the silo okay that's done he has given he has opened and closed it what the next thing i'm going to do is going to say i need a wait command because if i go back to loop and a call hasn't arrived yet it says oh hash code oh we need to open again and open again and open again no that's not what we want so we're going to say to that logic channel a uh, wait command isn't that that really special because i'm just giving it the number in this case i'm saying 99 so it gives a number because it's still occupied because it has to be a number zero was for me free but it's not free because that call is still on the way so we're going just to set that channel to 99 and then we're going to back jump back to loop so it doesn't mean it's not um if it's equal to zero we'll go back to loop it means it's not equal to zero but it's also not equal to that code so when it's not equal to that code it has to jump five one two three four oh it goes to jump loop right so confirm and we're going to export that in our ic so if i now turn this ic on it will cast a call into the generator you can see over here i have a logic ic housing that reads that channel with its setting so if i put you on we set it request call should be setting to 99 it's not doing so i made a mistake somewhere it will now request more than one call that's not the perfect thing what we needed to do and still hasn't received it so i probably made a mistake somewhere Oh, maybe it's handy to turn the silo on. So I say on. Let's do it on. Yeah, it says now 99. It will well wait till it's received. When it's received, they just it said reset the channel to zero. Okay, this is only one silo. Well, I'm not going to program all the silos. We have an IC chip over here. Let's put you there in. Let's import it. It's almost the same only for each. I got one for iron or copper or gold or so all the hash coders I did it in here. Also, I got one for the vending machines, but then for the or ingots. Well, what can you do with it? Well, I have some setup here. Also, I got a shoot here and I have a manual request system. By turning this dial, I can request certain items let's do for the fun call again so now i'm going to press the button but and i have a wake up for coffee it will because this one is set to zero to one it will always go straight unless i do it logic wise so i have a code here that says honestly it does the same to channel one it writes that hash code of call to the channel one the silo will give it gives the wait code in this case i use the hash for the coffee mark and then it will wait and over here it will wait till it's get out of here i have the shoot outlet connected to so as soon as something goes through here it knows okay i received it press reset the system but like i said you can do a lot of more i can also say okay i want a stack of gold or I press the button again and it will request a gold ore. Also, we have ingots on here. Like I said, I have also connected all those vending machines. Let's say we want a ingot, stack of ingots from silver. I press the button. The system says, okay, it's occupied. And now it's free again and we have an ingot silver i haven't touched that shoot anyway it's not even driven by any logic it just goes straight through over here and of course you can expand it you can see the shoot system goes all along 
now it's one long system you can see all these kind of shoots toggled here these are connected to printers we can also do this use this system to request ingus for the printers i made a code that says in this case the printer we have the shoot we have the logic memory request and i have a flashing light to let's see that it's on the way at the printer so honestly we said to clear the memory of the printer and then it's the same we're going to read how much iron it does has how much copper it has how much gold it has when it's lower than 100 iron so we have less than 100 iron in the machine or less than 100 copper it doing a request instead of manually it says from okay first it checks is the channel free again if not it goes back is the channel free it's going to set that hash code r1 it set the shoot to mode one in this case it sets the flashing light one and then it loads in the input count of the printer then we're going to wait like the other i also wait in this time in this case i'm reading the input count of the printer as long as it's equal zero to zero it waits when it's not equal so because that's input count is zero and this is then one because it received it will reset the system so it gives the system free with a zero it says the uh, printer uh, flashing light off in this case and it clears the memory of the printer again so i have it set up for this auto late so if i turn on I don't even have to turn on the printer we can turn it on but yeah let's see if you turn it on then we also can read the contents better but I, if i put this one on you can see it's going to request it already requested iron it's going that quick that it cannot keep up but you can hear it and you can see it flying i left the gap open here so copper goes in next thing is going to be uh, gold can see it has 100 iron 100 gold now we're going to get silicon that was the silicon and also i get it for steel you can increase it as much as you want but these are the five items that are going to be used the most you also don't need yeah you can add it with uh electrum if you have that in the system you can make it as big as you want as soon as you make sure that you set your shoot to zero to one and it has to be one long system of course you can make a branch of it if you program it a little bit or others that's no problem at all it's just how you program it so i'm gonna grab you put you off put you in there <coughs> also i got another printer here let's whip it this one is also free the electronic printer but you say okay what is as goes at the same time well let's show you that i'm going to open this printer i'm going to put on the do you want doesn't matter but we're going to put on the uh ic you can see it's now requesting okay let's also print some plus sheets so this means silicon is below 100 and you can see it requests this one is requesting now he has to wait wait is over that one reads the silicon and now he's going to do that so the system will always check if this uh the code will always check if the system is free if not it will wait till the system is free again or the logic stick system is free again and it will request and of course you can make it wild and expand this money that you want but it will always do its thing and that was the seal and this one keep on printing so you can always do this as you want it to let's do it again put you on just to see if it works but you on and we'll still start requesting also i can say okay you can print me whatever 
Let's print a battery large. Oh, maybe it's time to print a new one. Let's print a battery large. Okay, you are printing a battery. Okay, he did a request again. So the system will always go with eclo if it goes on and on. So now is this one is requested because it has too many, it has not enough gold, it's slower than 100. You are 100, okay, now he is ready. So the system, you can make this logistic system as long as you want. You can stop printing now. But you can see and do everything what you want. He's probably requesting steel now. There was a steel. And you have also all the items. If you have any comments, leave them below. And uh, thanks for watching and happy building.